Here we go. All right, so thank you so much everyone for joining uh, this great webinar. Um, we will be talking about the iMotion solution for multimodal research, um, not just eye tracking, but all other types of biosensors. Um, so before we get started and the, the presenters will take over, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Kate. I am the marketing manager here at iMotions. Um, so I will be monitoring the questions over the course of the hour. So we will aggregate these questions as they come in, and then there'll be a Q&A after Marcus and Kirsten have demoed um, the software. Uh, we also have uh, some email addresses that you can reach out to if you find that you have a question that comes up afterwards. You can also join our Discord channel. We have the hashtag iMotions Discord channel just uh, for asynchronous messaging. And then if you want to contest, uh, contact us directly for um, questions regarding, regarding this or iMotions, you can email at us at marketing.imotions.com. Or if you're interested in our solutions, you can contact us at sales at iMotions.com. Um, yeah, so I hope that everyone has used the Q&A function before, but if not, it's pretty easy. There's just a box that says Q&A and you can type your questions in there and I'll be aggregating them. Um, yeah, so that was all for me. Thank you for joining and I'm going to pass it on over to our presenters. I'll also turn off my camera so I'm not distracting. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Marcus, do you want to say start saying who you are? <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Marcus. Uh, you might know me as Marcus Plank, but I changed my last name because I married the most wonderful person last year, and I took her last name. So my name now is Schönberger. I did my PhD in general psychology and uh, statistics at LMU München, and uh, I did a postdoc at uh, the Institute for Neurocomputation at UC San Diego. I was also analyzing EEG, motion capture, eye movement data in a kind of mobile brain body imaging lab. And um, yeah, I still are in close, I'm still in close contact with my PhD advisor, Klaus Gramann at the B-Mobile lab in Berlin. Uh, and uh, yeah, I joined the commercial side of uh, like life uh, when I joined Brain Products as a scientific consultant. I was also acting uh, as a product manager at iMotions and then a short period of time at SMI before it was handed over to Apple. Uh, and then, of course, I came back to iMotions and I'm very happy to join, to have rejoined the iMotions family. Um, and I'm now working from Berlin and um, doing primarily uh, scientific consulting and also sales and training uh, activities for iMotions. Cool. Yeah. That is very, very exciting. And I love to hear about your background every time. <laughs> so uh, hi, everybody. I'm Kristen. Uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar. I'm super excited to have you all here. Um, I am also uh, an offspring from the LMU Unix, so to say. I did my bachelor's in psychology there and worked in Heine Dorbus eye tracking laboratory. But I then continued to Berlin, where Marx is uh, today based, um, to do my master's, where I work at the Visual Perception Lab at the Charité Berlin and also the eye tracking laboratory. Uh, from Martin Wolfs. I also spent a year at Lund University and took some classes there, I took the board were there as well. I then continued uh, my journey to Kantar, where we did opinion research studies and also did some consumer tests with applied eye tracking and I've been with iMotion since 2018. So already three years. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's already been three years. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking to you today from our headquarter in Copenhagen. Uh, Marcus is based out of Berlin, as you can see here in the map. And uh, we're a global company. So as you just heard, our headquarters in Denmark, but we also have offices in Boston, in the United States and in Chicago. And you will also find us in Singapore and in Sydney as of today. So, and iMotion has been around since 15 years or 16 already now, and you've seen we've already grown all over the world. And that also holds for our client base. We have more than 1,300 customers and many are different labs all over the globe. And we are very, very proud of this. So now you know a little bit about iMotions as a company, a little, little bit. Um, but for those of you who have never heard of iMotions before, what is actually iMotions? So iMotions, we make research software. We are a research platform that allows you to collect data, not only from eye tracking, but that's of course a very, very important modality that we support, but actually to perform multimodal research to unpack human behavior from all the different levels. So you can use our software to natively synchronize all types of different 
uh, biosensors. And many of you have probably done multimodal research before, maybe combined eye tracking data with EEG or maybe uh, with cameras, and you probably know the struggle to bring together all these different devices in their unique manufacturer's format with the different sampling rates, maybe different precise running all the different setups, and you know that this can actually be a big struggle. And this is what we have simplified. You can use eye motions to synchronize all these different sensors, such as eye tracking, skin conductance, so electrodome activity or galvanic skin response, facial expressions from different video feeds, uh, EEG, also ECG, so heart rate, heart rate, heart rate, heartbeat, <laughs> uh, EMG for muscle, uh, muscle tension, respiration, and even other devices that you can synchronize through our programming interface or through our LSL lab. For example, data from a car simulator, for example. And you combine all these implicit measures and data streams also with a uh, conscious report through survey slides. And this is all brought together in one single software platform. And our platform doesn't only handle data collection, you can also use it to design your experiments. So to present, to present your images, videos, survey slides, websites, whatever you want to show to your respondents in your experiment. And you could even combine our software with uh, an external stimulus presentation application, for example, a script that you wrote in Psych Toolbox, and then just use iMotion to synchronize that experiment with your data. And then once all the data is collected, we also have a lot of uh, analysis tools, <clears throat> signal processing algorithms, visualization options, you get different sorts of exports, and especially the signal processing part is what we would like to talk more about today. This is an example of what a study would look like or a data recording would look like, would look like in iMotions. So this is a short video recording that we made on the famous inattentional blindness uh, video. You remember, you may, might recognize the gorilla and two different teams play, throwing a basketball. And we were recording four different modalities in our software. And this is the result that you see here today. So what is this all that you're seeing here? So the top left, you first and foremost see the stimulus replay. So the video overlaid with a fixation plot that came from the eye tracker. So you see the two fixations together with their line connected and areas of interest that were placed during the analysis. On the right, you see the respondent video. We could even uh, synchronize more videos. We only have one respondent video here. And this video can be used to extract facial expressions. So you see my colleague Dammit is nicely smiling here. And this is already reflected here. You see her joy signal over here. Um, and that really brings us to the most interesting part, to the different signals that have been synchronized in the software. So please remember that this is really a native solution. And everything ends up in one software already during the recording. So see here, first and foremost, the raw eye checking data, the X and Y coordinates that are also plotted here in the fixation plot. And below, you already see some processed eye tracking data, notably the fixation duration um, of the different fixations detected here. Then you have one uh, graph here showing her joy score, so to say, that is a, a result from the signal processing uh, from the facial coding algorithm. And that would give you um, the different core emotions, but also information about 21 action units, such as brow furrow or mouth opening, for example. This can also be used to, for example, detect blinks, which of course is important, for example, for data cleaning in EEG. And we can detect blinks either from the facial coding algorithm or also from the eye tracker itself. It's also combined with the skin conductance signal, which you see down here. And you can already see some flags here for the process signals where we're finding the different EDA peaks, the critical signal in the skin conductance signal. And in the very bottom, you see uh, EEG data, both the pre-processed EEG data from different channels, but also alpha and beta power as they were extracted from our signal processing algorithms. So all in all, it is, we have four modalities here synchronized in one software. And you have all these different signals here, either the raw signals or the process signals. And that is all, as I said, ending up in our uh, research platform. Just sort of say so that you ever see everything in action. This is the replay of the video. The signals are still the same as you saw before. So for example, you see here the onset when she was smiling of the joy. You see that this was followed by a Gavana skin response peak. And very nice to see also here in the stimulus replay, the, the gaze replay, the different visual fixation visualizations on the areas of interest that were animated in the video since it is a dynamic stimulus. And there is of interest that bring us to the next part. 
Um, signal processing, where we talked a little bit about that for the psychophysiological signals such as EBA or EEG, but of course uh, we also have a lot of tools for eye tracking. So you already saw different fixation plots, uh, visualizations, um, and because of all the all the normal or the standard visualizations for eye tracking, like heat maps, for example, um, bee swarm visualizations, and you also see that here in this picture here. But you can also uh, very conveniently place areas of interest, which of course is especially important if you maybe work with students, for example, who need a good user interface to draw their areas of interest. And you can then visualize, choose to visualize different sorts of AOI metrics, and they will always be co-visualized with the original stimulus for a very quick and easy review of the data already in the software. And of course, all this data can also be exported into CSV files for further statistical analysis. And that brings us to the point that I would like to talk a little more today, and that is signal processing. Because, of course, there are a lot of commercial softwares out there that offer signal processing, and especially, of course, also AOI statistics for eye tracking. But if you're a researcher, you might have this healthy skepticism against commercial software, because it is often meaning that you have to rely on a black box for the signal processing. Because you have collected all your data, and then the software is doing some magic and it's giving you some results. And you as a researcher remain there sitting and asking yourself, how does this exactly work? Of course, the vendors are uh, providing uh, documentation, but you still have very little transparency over the actual signal processing, the actual computations that are happening. And this is what we are trying to solve in iMotions, because we have spent the last three years to write all our algorithms as R notebooks, which are algorithms that are, as they say, written in R, so R scripts that come with the installation and that you can seamlessly use from within iMotions. You will see this in a quick moment, what that looks like. So basically for you as a, as a user, not much is changing. You can select all the different algorithms, peak detection, uh, frequency band separation, et cetera, fixation classification, and get your results. But the big difference is that the, the, the processing pipeline is totally transparent for you, and you can totally see what, every, what, uh, what the code is and also read all the comments that our data scientists have put into the code. So you can really use iMotions for everything. So you can use it to synchronize your sensors, which, which we've already talked about, to then review the raw data, like pupil data, gaze data, EDA data, highlight and mark the data to separate different conditions. And then you'll activate the algorithms, the R notebooks, and they will then give you the process data, which you can again review in the software, like for example, detected blinks, gaze velocities, the saccade fixation information, EDA peaks, and all this process data is then already sliced and diced into exports, which will then give you summary metrics by all the different conditions that you have defined. So it's really one solution for everything with a very transparent processing pipeline. Just to highlight this one more time, as I said, these algorithms, they're written in R. You can just open them, review the code, and read everything. But for those of you who maybe are not so familiar with reading the R note, the R code, we, of course, also have documentation on the site explaining everything. And for you, of course, who knows how to read the code, it would even be possible, of course, to modify the code uh, if that is something you wanted to do. If you're now worrying, uh, worrying that you maybe, as I said, maybe are working with students that they're maybe not so familiar with R. Don't worry about this. It is, as I said, a seamless integration into the entire analysis flow. You will just select the different modalities that you want to use, select the algorithm, you can customize the parameters, and then iMotions will do all the work for you, and you can just open the files at one point and read them if you like. This is what it again this would look like so to say the the mix of the raw and the process data um, this is our data replay you see on the top the eye tracking data both the raw gaze data and then overlaid with that the fixations with the fixation count and the indicator of how long the different fixations were and then below you see all the different data streams and here in the left you would be able to pick and choose the different the the signals that you want to visualize so for example the raw data that came right from the eye tracker you could plot the graphs here but then of course also all the different process signals like for example here from our ivt fixation classification filter you can pick and choose them review them and then at the very bottom again you see the different markers that you can place to highlight your conditions Now you might say, this sounds very interesting. What is it all that I can do with these different uh, algorithms? And our ambition is really to make working multimodally 
as easy as it is with a standard commercial eye tracking software so that you can analyze your EEG data or EED, EDA data very, very easily and therefore easily scale your multimodal research lab. So therefore we have algorithms for all the different modalities that we support data collection for. So for example, for eye tracking, of course, we have uh, different fixation classification filters and IBT filter, but also duration dispersion filter. You already saw the different AOI statistics that you can compute with our software and already mentioned that you can also detect blinks from the eye tracking data. You can also do, you do blink detection from the webcam through the facial coding algorithm, and you can then use a thresholding uh, tool to binarize your different signals. So for example, to detect where are people actually smiling? Where are they smiling so low that it doesn't really count? For skin conductance or electrodermactivity, we offer a peak detection algorithm as well as a separation of the tonic and the phasic signals. We have tools to epoch your data and also to extract signal quality from the EDA signal. For ECG, you can compute heart rate variability based on ARM SSD or SDNN. For EEG, you can uh, extract different power bands so that you can compute power spectral density, so alpha, beta, theta, et cetera power, and then also compute frontal asymmetry based on these different power, uh, this, these, these different frequency bands. And then lastly, for electromyography, you can smooth and normalize the signal for further analysis. All the data, once it's being processed, can of course also be exported. So you can review it in the software and then you can export it for further statistic analysis. You can of course also just export raw data and then run all the signal processing with your own scripts. That is absolutely an option. But you can also export the raw data together with the continuous process data. Like for example, here you have ECG data, eye tracking data, and then on the right you already see fixation saccade data. And go ahead with that export that also contains all the different markers and other events that you have placed. But if you uh, already want to just use the signal process that we have made, you can also export summary metrics, like here, for example, uh, the AOI statistics, and then load that into SPSS or some other software for further statistical comparison. If you think that this sounds exciting, you might maybe have one question in mind right now. Do I need special hardware for this? And uh, I'm happy to say that iMotions is, so to say, hardware agnostic because we, we don't make our own hardware. We think that there are many great manufacturers out there that are already making fantastic hardware, so we do not, do not need to reinvent the wheel. So we have partnered with all the big eye tracking vendors uh, and have integrated their hardware into our platform. So if you're already using, for example, a smarter Aurora in your lab, you can just go ahead and use iMotions with that eye tracker. And we have partnerships with Toby Pro, with uh, SmartEye, with GazePoint and iTech and integrate their different devices. And if you still have an old Asmaya eye tracker in your laboratory, you can even still use that with our platform as well. The same hardware agnosticism, so to say, holds also for the other modalities. So for example, for electrodonal activity, we also integrate uh, different sensors from smartwatches up to the BioPack, which is a very high amplifying system. Also in the, in the mobile eye tracking domain, we have different um, options that you can work, different hardware options that you can use with iMotions. So for example, the new Toby Glasses 3 or also to the Toby Glasses 2, um, the different eye tracking systems for Pupil Lab, so the core and their invisible systems. We also work uh, with the viewpoint system eye tracking glasses and the Argus Science ETV, ET Vision eye tracking glasses and others that are not listed on the slide here. And you can, of course, also bring your eye tracking uh, studies into virtual reality, where we work with, for example, the Vario headset or the HSC Vive Pro Eye headset. And we resell all this hardware. Um, so we are really a one-stop shop for your, for your software and your hardware solution, also different consultancy services. As you maybe already have, uh, have seen the data, many of the studies that can run with iMotion are classic experimental studies. You have a test setup where you uh, attach a different sensors to like your webcam, your eye tracker, your skin conductance device, and then show the different stimuli. And then you have an experiment at the observer, observer booth that is uh, supervising the study and you can see all the data as it is being collected. This would of course be the classic case. You can, of course, also install everything on a laptop and then go ahead and test in a natural environment, uh, for example, for mobile glasses. 
but uh, I guess you all uh, are in the same situation in the pandemic now that many of you were not allowed to invite respondents to your laboratory. And uh, this is, of course, something that we have all also seen for our customers. And this is why that we have been working on an online data collection solution for the past year. Just very, very briefly, this would fill an entire webinar of its own if I, we want to talk about this in greater detail. But so, so that you know, all the studies that you're de de designing in iMotions can also be uploaded to a cloud and then distributed through the browser to respondents all over the world. And uh, we can then access their webcam. Uh, to extract facial expression data and also webcam based eye tracking data through these browser based studies and then you can access your PC and analyze all the data with the, all the tools that you have seen before. And just to talk a little bit about the future, we're also working uh, on a smartphone based solution, so, so to say this is our product evolution over time. To sum it up. Um, as I said before, we have more than 1,300 clients all around the world, and we're very, very happy to have both very, very strong customers in the academic space, but also in the commercial business world. And so roughly a 50-50 split. And we're very, very proud to work with great universities, but also great brands that you see on this slide here. And uh, I would now like to show you the software so that you also see it in action a little bit. Marcus has also uh, prepared uh, a demo for the mobile glasses solution. Um, and I would like to take actually inspiration from, uh, from, a cusp, from a study that was published by customers of ours in 2019 um, to just show you a little bit how you would set up a study. And um, this is a study um, by Milian colleagues uh, from the University of Rome in Perugia who run a study about video compression. And I found it was very interesting that they actually found a, a published the study in 2019, right before the pandemic hit, because since then, everybody has to talk about Zoom fatigue. And even today, we're having a virtual conference and we're talking over Zoom to each other. And uh, we probably all can relate to this feeling of fatigue after many, many meetings. And of course, we're all sitting there by ourselves. But of course, you also all know the effect that the broadband is getting a scarce resource and Zoom is starting to compress the videos. Everything is getting a little bit uh, pixelated. And uh, Melly and colleagues wanted to investigate how different uh, video compression actually uh, impacts the perception of the video quality and how this is also reflected in the different psychophysiological signals, because obviously uh, a conscious rating is one way to reflect how good the video quality was despite different levels of compression, but the other question is also how is this being reflected in eye tracking data, in the, eye, in the fixation saccade behavior, in valence shown from uh, facial expressions, and also in, uh, in the EEG data. And they were specifically looking at different um, frequency band based metrics such as engagement, distraction, workload, and frontal alpha symmetry. And uh, they use eye motions both for the st uh, stimulus presentation, so for different videos combined with rating scales, and also to synchronize data from an eye tracker, from the facial encoding algorithm, and from the EEG signal. And very, very briefly, um, they primarily found an effect in the uh, in the amount of fixation. So higher compression levels led to high to more fixations, also shorter fixations, which they're also linking uh, to effects of higher cognitive load. But they didn't find uh, any uh, significant differences in the valence that was expressed. So people were not looking more angry, for example, for higher compression levels. But they also couldn't find any effects in the engagement distraction or workload scores from the EEG for the different uh, video compression levels. However, they found that the frontal alpha asymmetry, so the motivation score, was uh, declining over time. People got less and less motivated over the course of the study, which may, we maybe also can relate to when we are getting Zoom fatigue. But with this said, um, I would just very briefly like to show you also the platform uh, so that you get an idea what everything looks like. And as I said, I would just like to take that study as an inspiration to show you how you would set up a, a similar study and then also show you these different uh, options for signal processing and data anal analysis that I have talked about before. I'll just quickly put in a, another device here, uh, again, skin response sensor, uh, so that we also have even more data to look at. So what you see on my screen now is uh, the iMotion software. 
Um, that is what it looks like. And you see already down here in the bottom of the screen, the different sensors that uh, I've connected my PC here and that iMotions would synchronize. So you see um, my webcam video first foremost with the facial coding, uh, coding algorithm on the side. Um, and then you see I have an eye tracker connected, which is right now actually pointing uh, towards uh, on another screen. Uh, the EEG headset that is standing behind me and also the EDA sensor that I have on my hand here. And all this data that these sensors are collecting is, as you see here, in real time visualized and in real time synchronized. So you see here the signals uh, from the facial coding algorithm. This is the selection of which different action units or uh, core emotions that I could extract from the facial coding algorithm. You clearly see I'm talking because I'm opening my mouth all the time. I'm smiling occasionally and now I just frown. Uh, and that is synchronized with the signal from my electrodes from the Gavanli skin response sensor, which is here. And it could also, for example, open up the signal for my heart rate here. In order to see the EEG data, I would first need to run an impedance check, which I could just start from within the software. But I think my friend over here doesn't have the most exciting EEG signal. So I would just stay here with my facial expression and my EDA data that you see right now. So how would you design a study similar to the one by Mele and colleagues that I just showed you before? As you remember, that was a simple study with different videos and rating scales combined in iMotions. And I will just set this up now. So we'll just start a new study here, um, confirm the different sensors that I want to use for my study, and uh, then import the stimuli that I want to use. You see here the different options for different studies that you can run with iMotions. This, of course, depends very, very much on the type of study that you want to run on the type of setup that you have available. So see, for example, if I had a VR headset now, I could also, for example, start a VR study based on either a Unity environment or also on 360 degree stimuli that I import into iMotions. You have options for website testing with the native browser, browser that you want to use, so Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, and you can also run simple screen recordings. For example, if you're running a test with Psych Toolbox, where you just want to synchronize that test with the different events that can be shared through our program interface and record what they were doing in their study. But in my case, I just want to import the different videos with different compression levels here um, to my study, which I'm just loading up now. And in the same workflow, you could also import different videos, for example, or also sound files uh, on that note. Then I need still the rating scale. And uh, we have our own survey editor. So if you want to combine your study with a self-report, you can just use our survey editor and you can add, for example, single choice and multiple choice questions, text responses, uh, or a scale. And you could also, for example, use this to make an instruction slide, of course. I have already prepared the scale so that you don't need, me, uh, need to watch me typing all the text. So I've made a template here that I'm importing and I want to save it to my study. And of course, need to show, show that rating three times. So I'm just duplicating my stimulus. I am randomizing my stimuli. It's an option if you want to randomize them or if you want to show all the stimuli in a fixed order. And uh, But I need to make sure, of course, that a service light is always following the correct stimulus. Therefore, I will attach them to the stimulus down here. I could, of course, also solve that through a block design. That is also an option, but this is the most lean solution uh, for that moment. So now I've set up my study. You've seen the different uh, data collection of, uh, stimulus presentation options with iMotions. So now I could just go ahead and add a respondent with different respondent variables and uh, then start the recording here. But uh, that is, so to say, the study in itself. Um, once the data is recorded, uh, you, this is just sort of say to see again what you saw, what you saw in the study before, you would be able to then replay your data as well, both on the individual level and also on the aggregated level, like for, you see, for example, here with moving heat maps or other data, and you could also then place areas of interest to analyze your data. It's very convenient to place areas of interest, and I can just place some areas of interest here on my elevated doors. These are for the rectangular ones. I can start the algorithm here to compute my metrics. You can also place, of course, polygonal, so freehand AOI circles or a grid as well over as, uh, as areas of interest. And then you will receive all the statistics to your right and can review them in the user interface for a quick uh, understanding of your eye tracking data. Just on a last note, before, I will, uh, before Marcus will talk about more uh, on this year, the signal processing itself, um, where does this live? 
this is its own function down here. And uh, you can activate the different algorithms, as I said before, by selecting the devices that you want to use, specifying the algorithm that, that you want to use. And then I will just call this algorithm right uh, during your study flow. Um, and you don't need to do any code. You can just use the algorithms right away. But um, Marcus, I know that you also want to talk a little bit more about the signal processing. Sure. So I will hand it over to you now. And I'm very much looking forward to what you're going to share about our glasses solution. Yeah, let me show you my screen. So uh, you should be able to see my screen now, right? So um, this is, uh, yeah, Kerstin was talking primarily about uh, screen-based studies. And I would like to take it over to the mobile world. Uh, as you can see here, iMotions can connect to any of these glasses systems, also the ones that are not existent anymore, like SMI, ETG, you can import the data and process it with supported and living algorithms. And I think that this is one of the biggest benefits. You can do a transition from your existing hardware to new devices. And uh, yeah, you don't have to get acquainted to all kinds of different software packages, but you just do one step into iMotions and you can stay with, uh, within this infrastructure to connect uh, to any of these devices. Um, I would like to show you uh, three studies uh, that are kind of representative for anything that has to do with cognitive research. And this is, for example, a mobile study with glasses, uh, including the screen recording from a smartphone. So in this case, it's about locomotion. It's about spatial navigation. I have been doing studies like these with EEG in laboratory setups, people were not allowed to do any movements. And I'm still uh, kind of, uh, I still remember these times of kind of these semi uh, natural setups. Uh, I also did recordings in VR uh, and it took about two years to build up the infrastructure to synchronize the different sensors. And I'm really thankful to my colleague, Joe Snyder at UCSD, who's been doing all the, the technical work uh, and this is just to say what we are building here, it's a commercial solution to the synchronization problem. Uh, and of course we can synchronize signals, but we can also synchronize events, video streams, as you can see here uh, on the left side, you can see the glasses recording with the fixation data of the participant holding a smartphone, in this case, an iPhone. And uh, with a screen recording a device, we can actually get access to the high resolution and the native resolution image a uh, video of the smartphone, which you can see on the right side. And in this case, um, I was actually wearing a skin conductance sensor on my left hand. Uh, so you can see the continuous uh, kind of time course of GSR or EDA activity. And iMotions has already been detecting the peaks in this signal. And on the bottom, you can see uh, respondent annotations which can be either triggered by exterior events, like in VR, for example, when people enter a virtual room, when they uh, direct their gaze towards virtual objects, iMotions can receive triggers from Unity, for example, and you can use these as markers for the eye tracking analysis. Uh, also, you can see manually placed annotations uh, like uh, way back or way to a specific location or preparation time. And this, of course, helps you to limit the skimming of the, of the data. Uh, you can jump to these specific events and analyze these particular time periods of interest. Um, here, uh, I, I also want to show you our capabilities of the replay editor, because you can see here that uh, you can jump in iMotion's replays, you can jump from one frame to the next, but you can also jump from one fixation to the next, making it easier and more efficient to skim through the data and find these time periods of interest uh, for you. The second example, and I would like to show you a couple of further uh, kind of details in these analyses. It's a multimodal study that I recorded here at the office. Again, you can see uh, the glasses video feed on the right side. So uh, this is the actual perspective of me sitting at the desk. And uh, you, can, uh, you can actually see the videos uh, recording of a so-called face recording with the uh, face uh, landmarks from Affectiva. So you can monitor visual attention and also uh, um, emotional valence, the direction of emotional activity while uh, people interact with devices. And again, on the left side, the screen recording in native resolution from the smartphone. And uh, this is just to show you that uh, sometimes 
when you do glasses recordings with mobile devices or uh, like a computer screen, it can actually be quite hard seeing uh, what the participant is actually seeing on screen because of the resolution of the device or because of lighting conditions. But with a screen capture that is synchronized with the glasses recording, you can actually see what the participant is seeing. And our current development team is working on a long term solution to also transfer the gaze activity from the glasses video feed into the actual recording. And I think uh, it might take a while, but we are on it, uh, just to let you know. Um, on the bottom, you can again see um, sensor data from bodily sensors. Uh, from facial expressions. So the orange channel, that's again, skin conductance activity. Uh, you can also see my pulse. So the green channel, that's uh, optical pulse measured from my earlobe. And on the bottom, the red channel, uh, that's interpolated heart rate. Uh, eye motions can use whatever signals we receive from sensors. In this case, the shimmer sensor is actively producing this heart rate channel, but you can also use our R scripts and feed actually in any signal. Uh, and if it lives up to expectations, eye motions can recognize the signal and apply the R algorithms that we have been uh, programming uh, before. Again, you can see annotations in red, blue, and orange, and there's also live markers which have been placed by the observer or the, the operator during the actual recording. The last example, and this is uh, the physical interaction with real objects, it's reading a textbook, in this case, my favorite lecture, an EEG book. Um, so you can see uh, just a screenshot of the Toby Glasses recording of me reading this book. And of course, you might think, you know, why doesn't they just show these stimuli on a screen? But in this case, it was all about reading the book and experiencing it, feeling the book and, and uh, kind of uh, going through the pages, uh, which you could not do uh, on screen. So you had to use glasses. But as you can imagine, it's really hard to analyze this data because of the continuous head movements of the participants. And, and of course, the book also can change its position uh, so the, the, the analysis in terms of applying fixation filters to this kind of data might be invalid. There is actually a quite strong uh, um, debate at the moment if IVT fixation filters or other fixation filters can actually be applied to glasses recordings because of the head rotations, because of the environment changes. So what we offer, it's a gaze mapping technology, which means that we can transfer all classes recordings into static uh, reference images and uh, since then all data has been transferred into static reference images you can apply uh, fixation filters again because you can transfer single participants in, into reference images but you can also transfer complete studies and multiple participants into one and the same reference image for example to produce a heat map and uh, we will just get there in a second uh, also, you can see on the left side and so called observer camera. So any study that involves mobile brain body imaging in terms of the participant walking around interacting with the environment, you can actually combine eye motions with these multi camera sessions and setups, we can also interact with mangled observation systems and grab the video streams from there. So you can really build a laboratory that allows you to observe human behavior from pretty much any angle, including cognitive activity from EEG. This is an example of our uh, dynamic areas of interest editor. Uh, Kerstin has been touching the static areas of interest, uh, and we, we saw a couple of moving areas of interest in the video. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to actually go uh, to the iMotions interface and open exactly this dialogue in our actual software environment. Uh, you can see that uh, we have placed an area of interest that uh, marks the smartphone screen. And, and as you can see here, we can manually place and manipulate the location and size of this area of interest quite easily. Let me just play this uh, as a replay. You can see that I had to place a lot of kind of landmarks and I had to move and update the position and size of this area of interest because of the movements of the actual object and me turning the head to the right to the left side. Uh, but our dialogue is really very efficient in terms of you can go through each 
each frame or from one fixation to the next and highlight the objects of interest uh, and place areas of interest there. You can see there the blue time period that denotes the, the time when this area of interest has been active in the recording. You can see that there is a disruption when, for example, uh, the device is not visible anymore or the participant looks to somewhere else. Uh, and this is a mobile study. And uh, we have customers at University of Innsbruck who actually feed the GPS location of the participant into the platform because our advanced programming interface allows you to even stream data from sensors into the platform which are not natively integrated. And also you can feed all data during the recording out of the iMotions platform for interactive setups. Uh, customers at the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart, Professor Kuchenbecker and team, they are actually using this interactive aspect to control social robots. So people are wearing glasses or having like facial expression analysis and the robots are adaptively responding to the participants. Uh, and this uh, you can all do with our emotions. Uh, it's not possible in any other solution. Also uh, with respect to glasses, you get the XY position on screen or in a, in a virtual recording in, in the VR, you can actually use the gaze cursor for any interactive setups. Right now, you can also see the problems of uh, glasses recordings on mobile devices in the actual outside environment. And again, uh, in this case, we have been recording the screen uh, with a frame grabber, and this allows you to actually see what has been going on the screen in uh, like during the actual recording. Uh, as you might imagine, tracking areas of interest like that can be very tedious, uh, particularly if you have many areas of interest or if you have long recordings, a lot of participants. And this is why iMotions has been developing an algorithm to map gaze positions from the actual dynamic recording into static reference images. Uh, this is the dialogue. Uh, it's a work in progress and uh, it will be integrated with all the, the nice replays that you saw uh, just the slides before, but this is actually telling you the entire story in a single snapshot. So on the left, uh, on the right side, you can see the actual recording. It's dynamic, you can replay it, you see the actual fixation. Uh, and uh, by using computer vision algorithms that include visual flow, uh, face detection and other pretty uh, smart and advanced technologies, iMotions can transfer the gaze position on a frame by frame basis into static reference images. So on the left side, you see the static reference image. Uh, you can see the mapped fixation. So there's a, 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 a like a yellow circle on the computed uh, gaze point. Uh, and iMotions can do this for the entire session. Of course, uh, the, the reference image might not always be in view or gaze positions might not always be available. And this is when the gaze mapping timeline of, uh, of a reference image is disrupted. You can see this on the bottom. Uh, you just define the onset and the offset of the potential gaze mapping periods. And then you just apply it and iMotions will actually execute all data processing locally. This is a pretty strong argument in terms of EU GDPR data protection rights. Nothing is actually processed in the cloud. You have complete ownership of your data, of the algorithms, of the outcomes. Everything stores is stored on your local computer. And you can see here on the bottom, uh, the green periods denote the time periods where the gaze mapping could be applied successfully. And the ones that are blue, these are the brief periods where mapping could not be done. For example, when the participant was blinking and no gaze activity was present. The cool thing is, the gaze mapping timeline, these, these intervals are, are stored with, with all the other sensor data. So you can actually store the eye tracking data in conjunction with any physiological data, skin conductance, facial expressions, EEG. So you know exactly when the object of interest, the scenery of interest, the gestalt, as, as you might see, uh, this, this perspective has been active uh, and you can analyze the, the other sensors in conjunction with 
the eye tracking. And of course, iMotions is storing the eye tracking coordinates as well as the areas of interest. So when you export fixations, when you export sensor data with our kind of extracted metrics, you can actually see which areas of interest have been fixated at a specific moment in time. And you can grab exactly these time periods or maybe the time periods shortly after to analyze the brain activity, the facial expressions or the physiological responses from the skin uh, that have been occurring in these very moments of interest. This is kind of uh, uh, the resulting image from gaze mapping. So this is the data of a participant's glasses recording mapped into the static representation. And you can see here that we can plot fixation sequences. And on the bottom, you can see the physiological data like uh, heart rate, emotional uh, expressions like joy or the directivity of emotional activity or the presence of emotional um, responses like engagement or attention the, the head orientation towards the objects of interest. Uh, you can analyze it in a single kind of summarized representation. And as you can see here, uh, since the data has been transferred from glasses into the static representation, you can place a single area of interest. You just have to place it once in this static image without the need to update it, its position and uh, uh, size, you just place the areas of interest, for example, on the upper picture, on the kind of upper text panel, or the other areas, and iMotions will give you statistics similar to screen-based studies. And of course, this time, you can apply IVT fixation filters because the data has been mapped into the static representation. So the environment is assumed to be static. The head orientation is supposed to be static, but the data is in this representation and can be analyzed with fixation filters. As you can see here, areas of interest uh, are very simple to modify immediately by, by creating areas of interest. You can see the position and size information, rotational information. You can group areas of interest, uh, as you can see here in the top and bottom section, and with a single click, you get the statistics out of it. And again, I would like to go into the iMotions interface and open the study uh, that has been actually uh, been uh, used to collect the data. I just have to move the zoom uh, thing here. So I will just open the replay, the areas of interest editor for uh, the book area of interest. Ah. There we go, where is it? So that's the beautiful thing of a live demo, <laughs> that sometimes things don't appear which are supposed to appear. There we go, we have to click the book. And here uh, you can actually see the placement of the areas of interest. You can zoom into the static representation. Uh, you can modify the areas of interest. Right now, everything is locked. But again, I would like to expand the list of potential areas of interest metrics, which you can uh, just turn on and off uh, in this excellent menu on the left side. I think this is really very simple to interact. You get the statistics directly out in the interface. And of course, with a single click, you can export the data into metrics files. So any of these statistics, including fixation and saccade related metrics, can be exported quite easily. And um, uh, you can actually see here that even the export functions are running in iMotions as an R script, meaning that you can open any of these code snippets to see what iMotions is actually doing, how we export the data, uh, but you can also develop your own R scripts and process data uh, with these technologies. So um, to sum up, um, I think iMotions, and this is my, my personal experience as a researcher working with multimodal data, it has been really a tough time uh, either you know, getting used to software that has been programmed by other people, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, there's EEG lab and, and there's uh, BCI lab and there's lab streaming layer and all these different protocols and you have to always get used to it. Um, and of course, all, we support any of them. Um, but but I, my, my really personal belief is that iMotions is solving the synchronization as a problem on a commercial side. Uh, we are here 
for good. I think there's nothing that can change our perspective as a client and customer oriented company to provide solutions dependent on what you need, what your budget is, what you can do. And uh, we really put a lot of effort on training, meaning that even if you're completely new to these technologies, our onboarding training is dedicated, making you kind of getting used to all of these technologies, taking the small steps. And then after two, three years, uh, digging deeper into the data, I have seen this at many applied universities in Germany, like Würzburg Schweinfurt, Peter Riegler, he's a really excellent lab technician, and he has managed to dig deeper into the iMotions world and bring in students that are interested in applying, uh, you know, scripts and extracting more than what is on the surface. And uh, they live all with iMotions, and they're able to extract both the high-level metrics and also custom values and, and metrics that you compute maybe in R or MATLAB or SPSS after uh, you have been collecting and analyzing the data in iMotions. So thanks a lot for your participation. I, I hope that it became clear that uh, we can do a lot. Uh, you only have to get used to a single uh, software for any hardware. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn or send us emails. But I guess uh, right now we still have time for discussion, right? We do. Thank you so much both to Marcus and Kirsten. Thanks sure. for demoing all of that um, amazing features live. That was really exciting. We have about 20 minutes left um, for questions. So I see a few have come in, but I want to give a chance for the attendees to write your questions in as well. So you can just use the Q&A function um, to bring these questions up live. But I will start with um, one question that we had, which was great. You talked uh, briefly about the AOI metrics, uh, specifically about fixations, but we have a question about fixation duration. Um, so the question is, I was wondering if there is a way to compute fixation, a specific fixation, for example, the duration of the final fixation before specific movement. And the example is in golf putting, the duration of the fixation that occurred just before the beginning of the movement of the hands to begin the putting motion. So can you maybe talk about how you would do this in iMotions? Yes. So the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, there are different ways to do this. One is if you have defined areas of interest, um, you get dedicated statistics about the fixation duration, like all, the average of all of them, but also specifically for the first fixation and the last fixation in a certain area of interest. So if you, for example, um, have your like your golf photo highlight and you want to know, okay, so how long is the last fixation before they were actually staccating to the next stimulus? That is something that you could measure that way. The other way how it can work is um, if you are replaying the data and setting markers and you are marking this is exactly when they were putting and then before and after, um, and then you can export fixation tables um, that include all the markers that you set as a Boolean, which then makes it very easy to understand also the temporal dynamic of the experiment and then set the different oculomotor events in relation to this. Yes, thank you, Kristen. We actually also have a specific webinar that is on our, um, our iMotions.com slash webinars page that we conducted with um, uh, Derek Mann, who is a professor of kinesthesiology at, uh, the, at Jacksonville University in Florida, um, who actually works with professional athletes as well to understand their eye tracking behavior um, when they're training and uh, understanding how they've sort of like looking at the ball in baseball, for example. So that is also something that you can check out. Um, and it, he talks exactly about how he sets up a study to understand um, physiology in that sense. So I would recommend checking that out. That's on emotions.com slash webinars. Just a little plug there. <laughs> um, okay, uh, now we have another question about hardware integration. So how is it possible, you touched briefly on you know, the fact that we are hardware agnostic, but can you go a little bit into more detail about how you manage to work with all the different hardware partners, both with eye tracking and um, physiological signals like shimmer, for example, like how does that integration actually work so that everything is actually yeah. synchronized? Yes, so I mean, our partnerships, they're our entire ecosystem, so to say, uh, and we love all our partners uh, and we're very happy that uh, our customers can use their hardware together with our software. 
And uh, the way that it works is that we, um, we were integrating different software development kits so that iMotions itself is natively talking to the different sensors. So it can stream the data right to iMotions. And then iMotions itself has, so to say, a universal clock that is registering, registering the different samples as they are coming in and thereby synchronizing the data in real time. You then also have tools, for example, um, to denoise data or also to correct for latency shifts in case you maybe have a sensor that was synchronized through an API or so you're expecting a certain delay here. There's also, as I said, the way to correct for that. Um, for some sensors, for example, eye tracking glasses that are maybe recording onto a phone, we have a visual cue that can be shared that then also allows to synchronize that data. Yeah, I think this is also one of the reasons why iMotions is a purely Windows based software. So our platform, because we integrate a lot of SDKs from various of our partners, uh, we believe that the, the iMotion platform runs most stably on a Windows environment. Uh, it, it actually, it, it must not mean that you're limited to Windows computers also for eye tracking, because you could connect to an eye tracker, for example, mounted on an iPad or uh, like a MacBook, for example, or on a Linux system. Uh, but uh, iMotions has to run on a, on a Windows computer. So we, we can actually give recommendations how a specific setup could be accomplished. And of course, uh, we're also here if you have a custom sensor, like specific respiration belts or body sensors, uh, it's, it's actually possible to stream that data also into iMotions. We made this experience in uh, quite some cases with uh, car simulators. Mm -hmm. And here, I guess we have a really big experience how to integrate uh, data from these car simulation environments into iMotions. Yeah, and that is also, of course, the role of our programming interface that Marcus also was already mentioning. So um, a car simulator, for example, would receive events uh, through this, but this is also the way or the window to receive events from other scripts, for example, or even to like live stream data, do some number crunching, then shoot the process data back in real time, for example. And we also have uh, an LSL application that's especially relevant for EG headsets, for example, um, so that you can also get data in, uh, in that sense. Um, and I, one, one note that I also want to make is so to say, so we really aim to be one software that you can do everything with. And that, of course, also makes it very easy to work with these different sensors, especially if you are new to multimodal research, because often, uh, oftentimes you work with triggers and then you have different devices that are, so to say, shared through synchronized events, which, of course, uh, is always possible. Um, but that still means that you need to maintain all these different setups and to, to make the different devices talk to each other, whereas in iMotions you connect all these different devices, it, regardless how many there are, to one software that then is steering the data collection. Yes, thanks Kristen and Marcus for that answer. Um, we have a, a similar answer actually about VR. Um, so uh, Natendi asks, does your system also integrate physiological sensors for platforms like Oculus and the HTC Vive? And in the case of Oculus, which eye trackers do you support? So we would love to just hear a little bit more about the, the VR setup. I guess, Kerstin, uh, because you're the, the primary product manager of the platform, I guess uh, it makes sense <laughs> if you talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so VR. Uh, if you're interested in VR with eye tracking, um, you can work with the Vario headset and the HTC Vive Pro eye headset. But uh, if eye tracking is not the primary focus, you want to, uh, to combine eye tracking uh, VR with another sensor, then actually uh, we work with even more devices because we're just getting a recording from inside the head mounted display. And we're actually currently industry partners in a super exciting VR uh, research project. So here in Denmark, where they're, uh, they want to take further look at telemedicine and uh, how also uh, social anxiety could potentially uh, be, uh, be treated through exposure therapy in the VR headset. So if you want to check out the VR8 project, and we're very, very proud to support the, the software part for the VR integration and data analytics there. Yeah, I guess I guess it's very important because primarily our facial expression engine from Affectiva it needs access to the entire face to actually work. So whenever people are wearing the head mounted displays, of course the the face is completely occluded. And in these cases, it actually makes sense to place facial EMG electrodes on the eyebrows or on the cheek because then you're actually able to show VR stimuli with or without eye tracking, but you can stream the EMG data into iMotions and see if people are smiling or frowning. Uh, and if 
that activity, for example, could be linked to specific events in the VR. And of course, uh, we have this Unity integration. So if you use eye tracking, there's a, there's a special container, a special function a group that you just uh, integrate into the code base. But you can just also do a screen recording and analyze the data just based on the visual inspection of the replay. Perfect. Thank you. So um, we only have one final question left queued up. So if you do still have a question, please put it in now or else we might, um, you know, uh, end a few minutes alert early. But uh, yeah, if you also think of a question after this, you can head over to our Discord channel um, or you can email us at marketing at emotions.com uh, or even connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, but yes, um, Marcus, you mentioned uh, at the beginning, or I think it was Kristen actually, about um, SMI uh, that right. you still integrate with SMI. Um, and I know, Marcus, you have been uh, at iMotions for a long time, and I would love to hear a little bit about how that evolution has, has come about, um, the fact that we still integrate with SMI, and what functionalities you can still use with SMI, or if you would like to switch over to a newer eye tracker, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, whenever I talk to, to people, uh, like researchers who still use SMI systems, I think that these are really stable systems and eye tracking systems. Uh, at the moment, iMotions can connect to any of the screen-based eye trackers from SMI through iView. Uh, and uh, so, so it's, it's still possible to reactivate these devices, for example, in a dual PC setup or even like with a RDN uh, on a single uh, screen, single computer setup. With glasses, you can actually in, import the, the data from BGaze. So any glasses recording uh, consisting of a video replay and gaze data can be incorporated into iMotions and you can apply our gaze, uh, gaze mapping algorithms or areas of interest uh, to that data. Uh, but of course, there's also kind of new eye tracking technologies. So, so in this case, we support uh, pretty much any of these SMI devices, either natively, so you can actually record eye tracking data in screen uh, studies, and, and we are replacing Experiment Center and BGaze completely. So you can actually connect iMotions to these devices natively. For glasses, a lot of the glasses recordings are, are still being done on the recording units, the mobile devices, but you can just import those in BGaze that should still work and you just uh, move the data over to iMotions and then you have it in our actively supported uh, environment and, and as you know iMotions is continuously evolving uh, and so uh, we actually have a lot of older devices that we're still supporting um, and, and of course we, we get requests from new eye tracking companies uh, all the time so uh, you can just expect that at a certain amount uh, at, at a certain time, uh, we will actually support that and this and this device anyway, uh, because it's actually quite complex for these companies to build up a software infra infrastructure that allows for stimulus presentation and analysis. Uh, and this is why we have so many partners, because they realize that they produce the best in class hardware uh, and we provide the, the best in class software to combine any of these sensors and uh, allow users in-depth analyses on visual attention, for example, or other physiological responses. Great. Kirsten, do you have anything to add to that, just in terms of our hardware agnostic possibilities? I think it's really important to remember that, you know, the suite of eye trackers that you can work with along with physiological signals is really broad. Yes, and I just wanted to highlight that all these different items can always be synchronized with other modalities. So for glasses, so for example, so if you have a system like the SMI glasses that you have to control over the BGA software, or also, for example, Pupil Invisible that I control over a phone, um, so they maybe don't natively directly talk to iMotions, but we're still finding solutions to synchronize their data with other sensors. So even your old SMI glasses can actually be used in multimodal studies. Uh, so this is just what I would like to to highlight. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So that was uh, all the questions we had. So again, feel free to email us at marketing.emotions.com if you think of a question or check out our Discord channel. We'll be around for the rest of ETRA. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so much to Kristen and Marcus for this in-depth walkthrough. Highly appreciated. I think you demoed some really awesome features in the Emotions platform. So on that note, we will say thanks for today and we'll see you later. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Bye-bye.